I am going to be trying dollar store acrylic painting items, putting them to the test, just to see if they can hold their own in the world of acrylic painting. So I was at my local Dollar Tree because that is also my second home besides Ocean State Job Lot and the library. They had this really cool section of Dollar Tree called like the craft section. In the craft section, they had these really nice selection of paints canvases, brushes, sponges, all these different items, and I was very impressed with their selection. So I decided to just sweep in, take in a bunch of items, and bring them on home and test them out and see what we can do. This is all the supplies that I will be using for this challenge today. So I decided to try to get as many of the primary colors and probably a few secondary colors just in case I want to play around. I'm going to repaint a painting that I've already done just to kind of compare and see what painting with dollar store items looks like compared to painting with more expensive paint brand like Liquitex, which is the brand that I like to use. All right, let's get to the setup. So before we start, I always like to do a swatch test just to see what kind of paints we're working with, their opacity, if they dry darker or lighter or whatever. This is a really great way to test and make sure that you know what you're dealing with. Can't forget water. Let's open up these bad boys. Schwing. Some pretty good spring back. There are a little bit of quality issues. You got the metal portion here that's just kind of flipped up a little bit. That can easily get water inside of it and just damage your brushes. Considering that you only paid a dollar for this, we're gonna just see where this goes. First swatch, going down. Paint is very thin. It's almost like milky, maybe just a little slightly visc more viscous than milk. Okay, so this is the color swatch result. Almost every one of these is a super transparent pignum, pig, pigment, wow, hello, pigment. Jeez. Which means that you can still see the black line when you paint on top. Really what this means for you when you're painting in reality is that you're gonna have to use more and more layers if you wanna cover up something that's underneath, which can be frustrating and can add buildup and texture. The most opaque one, of course, is white. You can still see that line showing up. And just to give you a comparison, I'm gonna pull out my more expensive Liquitex white paint and show you the difference of what I'm talking about here. This is the more expensive name brand white paint. And as you can see, opacity wise, branded one has a bit more of a coverage to it. But watch as we pile on layers, how long it takes before that black line disappears. You can see the black line is almost gone. We probably would need maybe three layers at most if we want to completely cover that black line. Now let's see if we can try covering with our dollar store paint. To get these to be about the similar amount of transparency, it took two coats of the brand name paints. It takes about four and maybe even five coats to get this line covered. And as you can see, because you're adding so many more layers, it adds more texture. So when you're buying a cheaper paint, there's less pigment, more filler. When you're buying the more brand name paints, you're buying more pigment and that is what gives you more colors that are opaque and can do more with less layers. Okay. Okay, now that our swatch test is done, let's move on to actually painting. Pop this puppy open. Urgh. That is the weirdest smell I have ever encountered on a canvas. What is that smell? This is weird. It smells like barbecue chips. <laughs> this is just me saying I'm hungry. <laughs> So first things first is I'm going to go ahead and make my background. Pull our three quarter inch flat wash brush to do this for us. So this is really interesting. As I'm painting this, the canvas itself, it doesn't seem as smooth to me. I'm not sure if this has already been gessoed. It does have a scratchier feel to it. Like the paint colors themselves, they, they are like really watery, I'm finding. So I'm like trying to play with them as best as I can. I'm struggling to get the color pigments to spread evenly. Yeah, this paint is like streaky. I really have to be careful how I'm laying down my paint colors. Oh man. Yeah, these colors are liquidy. Kinda makes it a little tough to blend. Yeah, you guys, this is... <laughs> I have to work at the colors more. I have to like continuously keep pulling, pulling, pulling at the color. It's so watered down, like it's it's pretty tough to handle. But that blend though, 
Well, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. That's really cool. <laughs> Mm, it's dry. But I actually don't hate it. It is still pretty streaky, but you know what? This is kind of what I was going for anyways with this unicorn. I want that like washy, brush strokey kind of look to it. So I think this actually will work in my favor. All right, now the next step is going to be doing a little splatter effect. Because the paints are so watery, I'm actually able to do a splatter effect really well. So I don't really need to add water and you get these nice vibrant looking splotches, which is so cool. <laughs> Guys, I beat the absolute out of this brush. It's so bent. Oh, okay, well, I can fix it. I fixed it. Oh my God, these brushes are so flimsy. They're about to fall off. Oh, <gasps> look at this. This thing is about to pop the F off. Oh my God. <gasps> oh my gosh, you guys. Paint spatters all over this wall. <gasps> oh my God, I better get a towel. It's all the way up here, what in the world? Guys, whenever you're dealing with acrylic paint where it's going on something that you don't want to go on to, you better clean that sucker post haste. A few moments later. All right, time to go make this dry now. 2,000 years later. This literally looks like a unicorn diarrhea all over my canvas. This actually looks pretty cool. The colors are, are fairly vibrant. The splatters are awesome. Like it's got this really, really nice color going. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna keep on rolling in here. Y'all want to see a magic trick? Magic. God, it is so streaky. So goddamn streaky. And just your friendly neighborhood voiceover. If you guys want to see how I made this painting step by step, I just uploaded this unicorn painting onto my Skillshare. You can check out that class link in the description below. Try it free for two weeks, give it a shot, make your own magic, and have fun. Okay, back to the madness. So far, this three quarter inch flat wash brush is kind of serving me right now. Doing a decent job of taking the paint and spreading it and taking it where it needs to go. It's able to like handle strokes that I'm putting down, which is pretty nice. When it's not falling apart, it's actually doing okay. Guys, I'm <laughs> literally holding this, hoping to God it doesn't break. So this detail brush is doing a decent job. It's such cute. All right, so going back in with the white, we kind of established this when we did the opacity test. We're gonna have to do a lot more coverage of white if we want this to even like look remotely like a white unicorn. I'm kind of okay with it not being a completely white unicorn. We kind of work with our limitations. We understand what we can't do and work with the things we can't control. We can use a stippler brush, actually, that came with the kit. It's not bad. Paintbrushes do quite well when they're not about to completely fall apart. <laughs> what, what even, what even is this? So we want to compare this to a, a similar painting that I did using Liquitex Basics Paint. Let's just look at the color comparisons and kind of similar actually. Blending looks pretty good. It's got that same kind of wash. Using that white color that I did here is kind of presenting the same transparency. You're paying like a third of the price and you're kind of getting a painting that's very, very similar. All right, you guys, we experimented with dollar store craft art supplies. Here is my final thought on it. The colors are great, it's pretty vibrant, and they are a lot of fun to use. They are a little tough when it comes to blending and getting the right pigment loads to blend together. That involves you having to work a little harder to get the blends to work. If you're not that experienced when it comes to blending, using dollar store paints may be a little bit more difficult. But with that being said, you have really vibrant colors, you have a a really nice color selection. This particular brand of dollar store paints, the colors actually stay 
pretty close to what's in the bottle. You probably have a little bit of darkening here and there, but not so much where it's super drastic. You're gonna have to do a little bit more work on your part to get the painting to where you want it to be. Especially if you're trying to take a lighter color and put it on top of a darker color, you're gonna have to do a lot more work, a lot more layering in order for you to create a more opaque layer. It can create texture issues. It may not be something you wanna do if you're looking to get a little better with your painting. In that case, I would recommend you just bite the bullet and get the more premium quality paint so that you can get the results you're looking for without having to waste so much paint in order to get there. But all in all, if you're just looking to get started, you want to dip your toes into the world of acrylic painting, dollar store paints are not the worst thing in the world, especially if you just want to mess around here and there. But if you want to get more serious, invest the money. So what do you think of my final result using dollar store paints? Comment below and let me know. I always love to hear from you, my gorgeous, darling, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button you know what to do so that you can see more videos like this from me to you in the future we all learned something very valuable today so i hope you all have a magical rest of your day i will see you all next time bye